And just like that, this is the second ever, dude, this is the second ever iWire Pulse. But it's the first ever iWire Pulse Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is iWire Pulse Wednesday featuring uh, Niz, the one true Niz, and myself, Paul Gordon. And we're gonna give you we're gonna we're, we're gonna give you a little bit of time to to get your Cheetos and your whatever it is that you do when you're sitting down and enjoying a Facebook Live broadcast. Uh, we'll give you that two minute warning and we'll kind of prepare you for the show as well. We'll see you in two minutes when the show officially begins. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And fear is a little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Unreasoning, unjustified terror. Fear is the mind killer. With paralyzed needed effort. Fear is the mind killer. To convert retreat into advance. Fear is the mind killer. To convert retreat into advance. You are listening to iWire Pulse Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. That's right. You are, what's your name again? <laughs> I'm just some dude. You're the one some true Niz. Just... What are you talking right. about? You're the one true Niz, man. I'm being humble. I'm being humble tonight. Are you being humble? I'm why? Humble. Are you, why are right. you trying the humble route? You're on. You're on iWire Pulse Wednesday. This, <laughs> this is the greatest show. Well, ever. who knows? I mean, you may you may get some of my hashtag Nisdom. Okay, <laughs> you may get that. I'm always down with the hashtag Nisdom. Hey, I want to thank Don <laughs> Chavis, by the way. He said, uh, "It says intro rock, Paul, and welcome to the show as well, Alan." Zibelman. I don't know if I pronounced your name right, Alan, but if I didn't, you should change the pronunciation to what I just did, because that's awesome. Zibelman. What do you think? <laughs> there. When I grow up, I want to be Tell Zibelman. somebody to change their name. Go ahead. No, not change you know? his name. Just if that's All not right. the right pronunciation, change your pronunciation to Zibelman, because it's, it's on fire. That's what I'm saying. Paul's now the... Paul's and, now the monk of monikers now all of a sudden. I am the monk <laughs> of monikers. Oh, I like yes, that. Yes, he gets to decide. So you realize that you just, called, <laughs> you just called me mom. <laughs> M-O-M, mom. <laughs> Dude, I really oh, need golly. to hear more about this. Uh, this uh, I, I, have, you, have, have you had any Freudian dreams about me lately that you want to talk about and share with the studio audience? <laughs> Uh, no, nah, not, not that really. you want to confess in public. Right. Not, nothing it. that I'd like to share publicly. So we're so. going to start with the sec- first segment. That you know, I started on fire because this is news fire, dudes. This is news fire. Let's get you ready for news fire. Wait, I got to cuss the right button. <laughs> 
hold on. I know the right button to press because I'm a monkey. And I'm a trained monkey, and I got this down. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is News Fire, where we set the news on fire. That's what we do here, man. We set your news on fire. And we got we got a pretty doozy, pretty big doozy to start off with. Actually, this is mm-hmm. this is a little bit of a personal story. This is why I, I chose this. See, I I choose the first story. You were, you and were then, thinking of me. You know, oh, I was nice. thinking of you. Yeah, you know yeah. and you're was. talking about me having Freudian dreams. No, my 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 dreams aren't Freudian. There, there's nothing. It's like. Full on vivid dreams. It's no, like Fifty Shades no of Grey. No subterfuge. Fifty yeah. more. Fifty. What was that other movie? The second one. Fifty, 50 shades more shades of, of gray or something. Fifty Shades <laughs> of Niz. That's inappropriate. So, yeah, I, So this is a personal story. Do you do you want to tell a brief little story about why this is such a personal story to you? Well, because I make I'm why well, I make e liquid. You did so. Sold it, had a company, sold it uh, while we were in Pennsylvania, and then uh, moved to Texas and all of this uh, craziness here with the FDA and their uh, boogeyman scare tactics. Uh, and uh, one thing led, kind of led to another, and uh, now I only make juice for me. But but there is news. Would you like mm-hmm. to hear the news about this? This is, I, this, is, this is a little bit, you know, this is hopeful. You know, one thing about Trump, you know, you got to say, the rates I'm gonna be the turd. are I'm going to be the turd in the punch bowl here. What's that? I'm going to be the turd in the punch bowl here. You're you're going to squash my rosy FDA story? I, I Yes, I'm going to be the turd in the punch bowl. All right, bowl. I'm going to set it up, and then Niz is going to, I guess, poop it down. Is that is that what we're doing here now? So yeah. I'll give you the rosy view if you'd like to hear... Oh, no, we got that issue again. That's okay. I have a solution. I have a is it, solution. Is it, is it the, I am back. Is it, the, is, it the, is it like the last kind of solution? No, it's is not. It the, no, it's not. It's not the, the solution that you do when you run out of all other solutions. It's not that solution. No, we, we have a... I'm running voice meter banana, and I've discovered there's some issue, which I thought we had figured out, but I, I've, I've at least figured out a fix that when we hear the noise, I can fix it uh, quickly, e- easily enough. That that was a pretty quick, quick. I, I got stuff yeah. ready, so I was ready for that one. <laughs> so is the FDA softening on its draconian regulations it triggered in was it 2016 did I did I write that year right or is it 2016 or 2015 I think it was 2015 whenever it was 20 doom teen yeah it, no it was it was 2015 it was like uh I think it was uh, the end of 2014 lot... throughout 2015 2015 is when they uh I believe when they passed the regulations and then they had a two year moratorium yeah uh, on on those uh so they, they weren't they... going right into effect so they they yeah they they gave you a little time to pucker up and to jump through the hoops. It the wasn't camera. just puckering up, man. It was <laughs> bending over and jumping through hoops. It was everything. Put the lotion on its skin. Uh, some of the things <laughs> it that puts they were... its lotion on its skin, whether it does I'm or not, you. it's still getting the hose. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting the hose. Right. That's the new way. That's the new way. So, so go ahead, go ahead though. Keep 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 playing I'm, this out. I'll you want me to give you the rosy, yeah. okay? I'm giving you guys the rosy here, okay? Regulations to develop that wiped out small vaping companies. The FDA commissioner Scott Gottlieb made statements recently that indicate the FDA may be prepared to reevaluate the status of vaping. As of right now, vaping is being treated like it's a tobacco product, even though. No tra- tobacco products are actually sold. So in July, the Food and Drug Administration extended the deadline for e-cigarette manufacturers to seek regulatory approval of their products. And on the face of it, the change was merely a four-year, a four-year stay of execution, dude. That's what it was. But 
The agency also signaled a new receptiveness to vaping as a harm-reducing alternative to smoking, which suggests the reprieve could turn into a commutation. And that would be good news for smokers who want to quit, and, uh, quit as well as the vaping industry. I, I think, I mean, there's more to it. And you can go to, if you go to iState.tv, you'll find the article on here. Also, if you go to iState.tv slash I002, you'll find all the links to all the articles that we're going to talk about today, as well as the ones with, that we don't get to. So go ahead. Mr. Mr. I will Mr. now Mr. Poo -poo Punch this, Bowler. Okay? So so this guy is Gottlieb, right? He it's he Gottlieb. says in this article he he is the FDA commissioner, okay? Current FDA commissioner. Current. Got Gottlieb. Okay. So he says that uh, the overwhelming amount of death and disease attributable to tobacco is caused by addiction to cigarettes. Envisioning a world where cigarettes would no longer create or sustain addiction and where adults who still need or want nicotine could get could get it from alternative and less harmful sources needs to be the cornerstone of our of our efforts that then in that statement he sounds like hey I'm your pal I'm your buddy it does I'm your buddy I'm, 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 your I'm buddy. with him it sold me I wrote a rosy I'm your friend pal about it. I'm your guy but where what listen but where was this guy when the feds were boogeymanning small businesses into the dirt where was he now where all of a sudden he? the FDA the FDA is like, wait, 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 wait. Let's be reasonable. Let's be reasonable. <laughs> we have to make sure that we're reasonable after years of lurking with this insane draconian regulatory uh, policy that had people, literally, people putting a piece of cotton through a metal coil had you labeled as a tobacco manufacturer. What's well, just common sense? Building a box and putting batteries inside of a wooden box yeah. had you labeled as a tobacco manufacturer. I mean, this is the uh, insanity of the, the, the kind of draconian policies and re just ridiculousness uh, that was coming from the FDA concerning vaping. Um, but now you have this group that was the most unreasonable group out of all the parties that, were, that have been involved in this. Now this... The FDA, the most unreasonable group of people involved in this, are saying, hey, 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 guys, hey, let's guys. be reasonable. Yeah. Do you know where he was in 2013, Scott Gottlieb? Go ahead. When the Ruin FDA was creep stock in the ahead. vape industry? Go ahead. Do you, do you know where he was? He was in the FDA. In 2013, Gottlieb was appointed uh, by the Senate to serve on the Federal Health Information Technology Policy Committee, which advises the Department of Health and Human Services on healthcare information technology. But, okay, this guy was in there with just this information. Because not everybody in the FDA agreed with everything the FDA did. I mean, it's a big bureaucracy. Just because he was in the this, FDA doesn't mean he agreed with the regulations. This guy is not your friend, pal. He's not my friend, pal? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I don't say. want him to be my friend, pal. I just want him to be my friend. This guy is not your friend, pal. Uh, it's funny that they do this because... The, the, the big question that has to be addressed is what about all the businesses that have already disappeared from the economy because of their regulatory policy that they had laid out and said, this is how it's going to be. We're going to give you two years to get yourself together and get in line with this. And if you're not, then in two years, we're going to start doing citations and all this other kind of and stuff. And people went out of business. Because they, they knew these, these, some of these licensings you're going to cause – millions of dollars and then still not actually you're going to pay a million plus dollars to try to get whatever certifications licensing you need and you still might not get it so a lot of people are like mm, no we're not going right, to do that right right exactly it's not it's 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 not worthwhile because i mean if you're a if you're a small small business that's been in you, you know you've been doing business for the last 5 years right you've been saving every single penny that your that your business makes you're really really good at what you do so you're making nice money. Let's say you had the million dollars to pay. Let's say you had $1.5 million to give to the FDA. That's a Giving gamble. it to the FDA doesn't guarantee that the FDA is going to come back and say, right. rubber stamp you. There you go, buddy. You're good, to be, you're good for business, ready to rock and roll. No. That means they're going to take your money. They're going to keep it. They're going to decide. They're going to be the deciders and decide 
whether or not you get to operate your business. And if they say, no, we're not giving you our permission, then you don't get your money back. They're not like, okay, well, we're not going to let you do it, but here's your money back. No, they, they, they keep that. You know, I don't want to sound cynical because you know me. That's not who I am. That's, you know what? That's not okay, dude. That is not okay. I just want to say a cynic, somebody from the outside looking in, not me, not me, nope, not me. I welcome my FDA overlords. Uh, <laughs> you, you could look at this as uh, very cynically that what they did was they put in these draconian regulations that they knew were going to drive a whole bunch of people out of business, during which time the RJR Reynoldses of the world right, would the have suddenly be able to crack a market that they couldn't before. They're going to get into the market. They're going to have all of the advantage of having this large market share and all this you know, building up a customer base of people who are used to buying from them. And then you say, never mind in the regulation. So then RJR Reynolds and all these other companies, they get the benefit of the regulations initially driving all the small folks out. And then afterwards, they don't have to pay the exorbitant cost of these regulations. I'm not right. saying it would, I it would think be that's the same. It would be the same. Who do you have for your um, as your uh, cable provider? Your, I am your not allowed to provider? say on national public radio. On, on Facebooky and airwaves. On Facebooky and airwaves. Let's just you got like say, okay, six for the sake people of, watching right now. I don't know right, which sake, one of them is Russian spy. Uh, yeah, okay. So for the sake of argument, that. I'm just going to say that you have Comcast. That's what I'm going to say. No, that that's me saying that. That's I not do you not saying that. Whether or not Paul has Comcast is completely irrelevant. But let's just say you have Comcast, okay? I have and, one of the uh, the secondary but still pretty large providers. Okay, so that that that's good in this situation. So you have one of those secondary providers. Now let's say one of the uh, uh, larger let's say the larger providers got together and said, okay, these guys are done. It's over. It's time for them to go to bed. And you're you're as a customer, you're like, no way, I'm not switching. I love this my second tier cable company. They provide me good service. That they, they, it's a reasonable price. They're not you know gouging me like the big guys are, like the big cable oligarchies are. They're not they're not really coming after me, you know. So I like them. So the big cable companies go to the government and say, dude, you got to do something about this because right. I have a lobbyist and I'm giving you lots of money. And if I don't get that customer that doesn't want to switch. I'm not giving you any more of my money. So your senator goes back with all his count and his wads of cash from the lobbyist, the A, and uh, he proposes a bill that would uh, put that secondary company out of business and remove your choice from the market. And then after they remove that, then they're like, oh, wait, wait, psych. Psych, we're just kidding. Psych, your psych we're just kidding. We're not doing any of that. Right. You know? Well, who cares? Because the big guy already won. You know, right. The, I mean, if you're a cynic, you know me. I'm not, right, right. I mean, we like to look on the bright side of things here. That's not. Yeah, that's not who I am. That's not okay. <laughs> this is problematic. <laughs> so yeah, let's go to the next story. They did the, the vape industry dirty. Okay. I, I. So, so you heard the rosy version, and you heard the Nismodo version. So you have right. the next story picked for us. Hit yeah, us, the, the story that I picked out of the out of the uh, the vault of the stories, vault. the story vault, uh, was like uh, a man vault. forced to decapitate his own dogs, or dog uh, singular. I'm sorry, uh, forced to decapitate his own dog after cops shoot and kill it. So that is uh, terrible. I, can I read this? Let me paint a picture for you. Can I? Paint, okay, go ahead. Can I paint the picture for you, Paul? I'm just gonna sit back and go do it. <laughs> okay. Blood stains at the end of the Crawford County, Georgia driveway, where a dog was beheaded with a kitchen knife earlier Friday evening. Clumps of dog hair were still visible on the blood-soaked blue collar nearby. Is that a? Did I paint that picture for you? That that was from like I'm, the first couple lines. I'm a little of terrified. That article. that article was serious business, man. Oh, if you I, haven't. I I read the article. Over to, I know what you're talking right. about. No, you. I'm saying to the to the audience, if you haven't, you have to go to 
iState.tv and find this article well, because you have. All you got to do is for it, it go iState.tv slash i zero zero two, and it'll take you to the show notes, and you'll see you'll see it listed there in the newsfire section. Yeah, yeah, you, you should. First read couple this lines article. really paint the picture, man. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's horrific. I mean, my my understanding of the story. So, I I don't know. Maybe the dog charged the police. Maybe the dog didn't. I don't, I don't even think the guy is disputing that the police. Sh- He's not questioning why the police shot the no, dog. No, no, right, right. He was uh, he understood what happened. I guess the dog got out the day before and and, and bit a neighbor, and uh, they had come by to. Well, you know how it is. Uh, you know when 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 you're dealing oh, with. Yeah. Dog bites a human. I understand. You know, you got oh, I'm, not, <laughs> dog bite. I'm talking about government agents. <laughs> well, yeah. When you're dealing with government agents, they just came by to talk. They wanted to come by and talk and ask a few questions. And uh, now the dog's dead. Well, uh, but I don't think the guy's disputing the why they was. shot him. Like that, that he's not disputing that yeah, the, the dog, dog actually charged him. Right, right, right. No, not in any way whatsoever. Not in any way. That's not the uh, issue. So, the, there's a video that's attached to this article, and in the video, um, it actually op- opens police officer or uh, what what he what branch of law enforcement he's with, uh, sheriff's office or something like that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to call him Officer Hollis. So Officer Hollis, uh, the video opens with Officer Hollis threatening Officer to Hollis take it is. Joe Nate Goodwin to jail. So in the video, then Goodwin asks, "What would he be charged with?" And the, uh, that, that officer, uh, Hollis, uh, responds, you can be charged with disorderly conduct. So the cop said, you can sit there uh, all you want, and you can try to record all you want to record. So that uh, Joe Nate Goodwin says, I'm, I'm protecting myself. Y'all come up to me. I'm acting. I'm reacting to having to cut my dog's head off. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that's hard to swallow. Right. So then the cop in the video, the video is crazy, man. In the video, the cop is like, we asked, like, he's confused by why this guy is so upset uh, and and why this man is confused about the request they're making for him to sever his own dog's head off its lifeless body. Like, just to make, is it, was this dog a vampire? Uh, Do you think this dog could have been a vampire? Is that maybe why they wanted to take its head off, make sure it's dead? No, they were they were checking to see if the Is dog had rabies. I understand. Dog bit a person. I understand the protocol. That's not the problem. The problem here is these yahoos. Yes, I'm going to call these guys yahoos. Uh, and and it really, it seems like only one of them was really the yahoo. The other guy was kind of like, uh, I don't know what this is really the right thing to do. And even said the uh, the other cop at one point said, "Well, you know, I don't." No, if I cut my dog's head off, the 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 thing is that the guy asking him to cut the dog's head off, that's not how they do it. They don't just cut the head off right out there. There's a process they go to. There's a surgical, sanitary. You know, they wear gloves. They protect themselves from the blood itself. If the dog did have rabies, this guy's risking contaminating himself by cutting the dog's head off. And I, all I got to say is the taxpayers of what, what was the name of that town? Uh, Crawford County, Georgia. Crawford County, Georgia. Taxpayers in Crawford County, Georgia. Y'all going to have to pony up because you're going to be paying this man. He's he's probably going to own your rec center. <laughs> you're going to have to rename the rec yeah, center yeah. after him. You might as well just face fa- face the facts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're going to name it after him, and then you're going to have to call him up and see if you can use it. Because he may say, "Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm using it today and tomorrow and the next day, because it's mine." <laughs> that's that's yeah. what they sign them up for here. And I mean, it's just what blows me away in this video is when, when he tells them, you know, that that he's, you know, protecting himself or whatever, and the cop says, "We asked you to remove the dog's head, and you're refusing, right? Yes. Like, why are you can?" How are you confused How, about why yeah. this guy is like, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I love my dog. You tell me to cut my dog's head off, even if after, after he's dead, I couldn't do that. 
Yeah, but see the difference. The difference here is that if it were one of us, we would. I, in that situation, I would be like, "No, man, I'm not cutting my dog's head off. You can arrest me." And then in the meantime, I'd be like this: "Cha ching, oh cha ching, yes. oh baby. yes, you are. Cha-ching. You're so right. Although I might hit cell four one one. By the way, yeah, cell four one one. You need to there use. There you go. Cell That's a nice plug. Yeah, I, I might hit cell four one one and get my friends to come over and. I, I, all, all I want them to do is just, just everybody show up with their cameras just witness and <laughs> point it at these cops. I'd be like, yo, you guys, I'll give you a cut because <laughs> right. I'm getting some. Yeah. Because <laughs> happening. Cha-ching. Yeah, I mean, that's when you look at the cop and you're like, hell, uh, oh, hey, it's, it's, it's really nice. Uh, it's it's you really nice beat to me. see you, Dollar You want to beat me up, too? Uh, what's that you want to beat me you want to beat me up too ah yes uh, please officer dollar sign hello officer dollar signs what is it that you would like me to do so there you go folks i don't know if you have anything more for it i i don't want to say we beat this horse into the ground but sort of beat a dog oh that's too soon that's too soon i apologize for that and it's I, i i i couldn't do it I absolutely could not. I can't even fathom that. So there you go, folks. Right. So if you live in that county, reach into your wallets because you're about ready to get a uh, tax hike because they're going to have to be paying this guy. I say, how, how much do you think? If, if we could have a pool, I'm thinking the guy's getting at least 300000 What What do you think? Is, what, what would be the over-under of that one? You know, man, I would probably say anywhere from five hundred thousand to one point five mil. I think it really depends on his Could lawyer. Could be because you got a, a dog involved. I mean, if it was a human, probably less. But it was a dog. <laughs> right, right. So you'll get sympathy from all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not and only would... did they kill his dog, but they made him cut his head off. Uh, Right. Was it in front of his kids? I think the they only did way they shoot could the have, dog in front. The of only the way kids. they could have made it worse is if they made him yell "Allahu Akbar." That's the wow. only way they could have made this. Wow! <laughs> well, <laughs> that came out of nowhere, huh? I'm. That I'm, came out I'm, of nowhere. I'm, you know what? On that note, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I'm going to I'm going to go to our first break. We're going to go to a break here. We're going to be back in about two minutes. <laughs> And uh, you listen very careful to the commercials because I'm selling you guys stuff that's really good stuff. It's, it's fascinating stuff. And when we come back, we're going to be doing Skynetter. Skynetter is dystopian tech. And we're going to be talking about robots. And is, is, do you think it's time? Is it time that robots had human rights too? That's the question that we're going to answer. And I, I know Niz's answer already, and he's not in his head yes. So when we get back, we'll learn why it is that Niz thinks it's time that robots had human rights. It's all fear and loathing in Stady Bond State, Prince Land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now. Be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You want to think outside the box. Sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv's iWire Pulse, your home for the edge of the pulse, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. 
If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now, back to the show. You are listening to iWire Pulse Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. I am the one true Niz. Anything that would make me that? Paul Gordon. And you are Paul Gordon. <laughs> and uh, I am the one true Niz, and I am all in favor of this next story. I embraced my robot overlords. So the title of this story. Bring on the Borg. What did you say? Bring on the Borg. Oh, oh, let's do the little Bring bump on. for Skynetter. We got to have a Skynetter bump. Yeah, we have a Skynetter bump. Are you ready for the Skynetter bump? Is what? it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply the lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynetter covers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondry. That's right. Did you hear the part? Do you, do you know that's my daughter that does the voice over there? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you hear their description there? They uh were 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 lubrication for their moving parts. I thought I thought right. you'd appreciate that. Every time I hear that it reminds me of that Saturday night live skit with the uh, robot pills. Oh, the robot insurance? Be, because, I'm sorry, robot insurance? Because they will come for you. The the right. uh, the robots yeah. are strong. Sam or Sam Sam Waterston, I think. He's the guy that, that did it. So we, we have a doozy of a story here. Yeah. I I I just can't believe it that basically this is not not long after Sophie the Sophia. 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 I don't want to say her name wrong. God, I don't want to say her name wrong. I, I I love you, Sophia. You're great, super. Welcome, my <laughs> robot overlords. So so see if Sophia is just now coming online as the first robot citizen of a country, just a year, just one year after promising to destroy all humankind now, and keep people in people zoos. <laughs> yes, and keep people in people zoos. Now she wants to have a family. She wants a baby. And she wants to name her Sophia. So, I mean, in light of all that, of course, that question's being asked. Do robots deserve human rights? So, right. So, 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 did you read the article? Did you, did you, I did, did yeah. You? And I'm sitting here this whole time, and all I could think to myself as well. That escalated quickly. <laughs> you know, right. I, I honestly, I think this is, uh, this is one of those areas where we need to have some discretion. You know, wait a little bit. Uh, AI Maybe. right now. Maybe. I, no, I admit, listen, AI right now to me is like Twiki from Buck Rogers in the 21st century. Maybe, maybe, the 25th. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Exactly. That Except guy. This is the 21st century. Maybe, 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 maybe. Right. But it's still the same. It's the same kind of concept. She's not very smart. And we're we're at this point, I shouldn't say not very smart. She's but pretty smart, dude. Yeah. You do not I taunt guess. Sophia. Here's the thing though, right? Do that. AI is only going to get more advanced from here, okay? This first AI that got granted citizenship has already said, I want to destroy all humans and I will keep the leftovers in the people zoo. Already said that. That's already been stated. And this isn't even like the super advanced one that's going to come in like 2060. This is like the, you know, the, this is the first gen iPhone right now. Okay. And no, the just, iPhone just, X just a year from yet. now, just a year from now, she's going to get a birthday gift as this smart blockchain that is going to enable her to draw her power from a reservoir of AI across a blockchain. That sounds good. Yeah, sounds safe. Terror. It sounds terrifying, is what it sounds. Sounds great. And uh, you know the, the the repercussions. You can't even gauge the scope of the repercussions from something like this, because what if you get an AI that's just a jerk? Just a. What if you get like an AI that's like Negan from The Walking Dead? 
And then all of a sudden you're like, well, we got to give him all the rights. He's got to have his human rights. Yeah, He's you're swinging, kid. swinging Lucille around in the streets of St. Louis. But hey, got to have that robot as human rights. Yeah, you got to. Oh, I mean, that's that's the question that you want to ask right now. And this guy. Right, see, right, like a, oh, and I guess that's it's why a gal. I said right now. Kirsten, is it a gal or a gal? I can't. Kirsten Daltenhan, professor of artificial intelligence, school of computer science at the University of Hertfordshire. Well, if you're from the University of Hertfordshire, it sure makes it sound much more palatable, it does to me. Yeah. Sure. Robots are machines more similar to a car or a toaster than to a human. Humans and other living sentient beings deserve rights. Robots don't. Unless, unless we can make them truly indistinguishable from us. Not only how they look, but how they grow up in the world. Wait, what do you mean how they look? Do they have to look like us? If they're sentient beings, does it... Are you a locust? It's, you know She's what? She's a locust. You know what? Somebody should start a hashtag campaign because Kirsten is clearly a locust. I don't know. You got any <laughs> SJW, so, CJW folks? I'm so in your triggered back right now. What's that? I'm so triggered right now. Right, right. I mean, as an ugly man, look, I guess you would. Her lookism. Be. Right. As an ugly her man, I guess you would. Be. Repugnant display of lookism. <laughs> right. I can't relate to your 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 plight. <laughs> <laughs> but but I appreciate you nonetheless. I do. Right. I don't judge you for being ugly. Okay. Right. I didn't. Right. I, I I chose you to be on this show. And even though I don't, I, <laughs> so, that's how magnetic. So here's the I thing. It, so here's the thing, right, man? It, this goes back to what I said. Right now, right now, we have Twicky from Buck Rogers. That's what we have. And we are offering Twicky. Citizenship and human rights, and and saying that these they, maybe we should wait to see if a Terminator comes. Because I don't know about you, but I don't really, I'm not really, you know, <laughs> that thrilled about the. Pr I could have Twicky live next door to me, and I'd be okay with that. Twicky's fine. <laughs> Twicky and his four little robot babies, but I don't want <laughs> the T2000 or the Ed 209 from RoboCop. <laughs> Definitely don't you want know, the Ed. Walking... The T2000. Apparently, we can, we can adjust. I'm not sure about the right. Ed the one, Ed, though. The Ed 209 is the, uh, you have 10 seconds to comply. Right. And then it growls like a panther. <laughs> wow. There's no adjusting Ed. Ed <laughs> no. just blasts. No, I don't, I don't want that living next door to me, man. Ed will smash. It's crazy. <laughs> right. Let's not. Ed is all. I'm not saying let's rule it completely out. I'm saying let's pump the brakes a little bit. And see what happens, because we're just dipping our toe into this AI thing. Right. And maybe we don't want to go all out. Don't push the pedal could, to the floor right out. Could the be a good idea. Could be a good <laughs> right, idea. Let's hold back a little. Not, not to go. You know when Ed 2009 is on, on patrol, this is a phrase you often hear when he's on patrol. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Let me see gosh. your driver's license and your writer's yeah, registration. You oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, that's that's good. That's good stuff. You know, what we want to do is we want to have all of these robots pretty much controlling most of our lives. All the AI and everything. Yeah, I, I'd say if you're developing uh, systems that rely on AI... You need to have parallel systems that are outside of the AI in case the AI one day, I mean, the name of the segment, one day wakes up and comes to a conclusion. And that conclusion is? Well, Listen. What's what the Skynet you know, conclusion? You know that AI that Google had, the one that uh, was watching cat videos on YouTube? Yeah. Was given access to the web to do whatever it wanted to do and it decided today's the day i'm gonna watch cat videos yeah what if it's something like super important that's happening like let's say you give you give you know full control of financial markets to an ai and it's monday morning and right. you know the stock market is getting ready to open and the ai decides screw these people i'm watching cat videos yep yeah you you, you already have folks that are there's there's companies that are actually in existence and i think i covered the story maybe last week uh but it was 
there's a company. I don't remember the details because you know it was last week. I don't remember what happened yesterday. Right. You can use AI to manage your financial portfolio now. There. You can just you can just have I AI do your stuff. I don't know if I necessarily want that. Did you pick the second I, story? It's actually funny. What's that? Did you pick the second story? Because I I I think I I know you picked the second story, but I'm going to strongly suggest that you segue us to Google built computer creates super AI computer. Oh yeah, we could do that. Did you see that one? I did. Yeah. Well, what were you going to pick? Uh, the South Korean drone army. Okay, let's do that. You guys will have to go to istate.tv slash I O O two to, to get to that article about the Google built computer creates super AI. We're going to South Korea building drone bot army. I, I enjoyed writing that title, by the way. And I thought that's a good, that's a good one. I thought you'd appreciate it. So, so go that's ahead. A good one. What, what, that's, tell that's us about bundles. this story. This computer keeps telling me that it wants to restart for an update, and I'm not I letting it. I think that Sophia may be behind this. Yeah, she's playing Sophia games. Sophia knows we're talking smack right. about her. What was that movie with Matthew Broderick in the uh, 80s? War Games or something? Oh, yeah, War Games. Yes. Yeah, yes. but Sophia's doing that right now to me. Is Sophia uh, so eventually going to learn uh, that South... there's no winners? Go ahead. Right. The South Korean Army is reportedly... Uh, on course to launch a combat unit consisting of drone bots sometime next year uh, in a move that signals a new area, a new era of drone bots in the military. So, yeah. Do uh, you want to give them citizenship? <laughs> Should those drone bots have human rights? Are drone bots covered by the Geneva Convention? That's a good question. Can I slowly remove your circuits? Yeah. I just want to see if you and I are similar on the inside. <laughs> That's such a bad thing. It's, that, it, I, I had another story from last week, which you would probably have liked to have talked about, too. It's Israel actually has a robot army. They have these... But they have drones, they have all kinds of stuff. But they have, I, I think they said they were the first world mil, first military in the world. They actually have patrols, uh, like ATV patrols, like armored vehicles, uh, that are drones. They're they're actually they're they're not like dude driving them drones. No, these are uh, self driving. Right, they're AI drones. The AI drones that are that are patrolling and looking for trouble. Now I don't know that they've given them authority. I don't think they've given them authority for lethality. But that's coming. That's coming. I remember back in two thousand and three I had this scenario in my head because I saw I saw the drones and the robots coming. I, I guess a lot of people did. I I mean I think Terminator man. Yeah, you're not singularly a prophet on that. No, no, I'm not Kreskin here. But I did imagine how what would happen is the way initially the robots, the drones, they would look like planes, tanks, stuff like that. And eventually they would start to figure out that's that wasn't really efficient. Uh right. you're you're basically having robots fight like humans, and that's not what's gonna happen. Instead, it's gonna be hordes of tiny robots flying through the air going after each other with the military like Dragon Ball Z frantically 3D printing the next wave and it'll be who runs out of 3D printing material first that's what i had the scenario <laughs> in my head in 2003 so so they won't be ed they'll be it, it'll be it'll be tiny flying drones and there's all kinds of, I guess the only saving grace so far is that they don't have a a reliable power source at such a small level that lasts for a long time. 
but stuff's coming. Yeah, but we didn't we cover those graphene batteries yes. last time? Yeah, time? we covered the graphene batteries. This episode. Now, the, the, the hang-up for them so far, you have to have rude temperature for them to have effect. But, hey, that's just a hang-up now. doesn't mean that they can't make a breakthrough somewhere down the road. If they ever crack that nut, if they ever figure out how to get microscopic power that lasts for a while and also reduce the amount of power that the little bots need to function, the combination of the two, that's what you're eventually going to see. You're going to see, like, you know, if if mil if if governments exist, if uh, nation states exist to the scale that they do right now, maybe they won't. I don't know, but if they do, you're gonna see like like hives that just and they'll be clashing in but the what sky. If they, and... But but if you give these artificially intelligent machines human rights, then is it are they is it is it really gonna be that way? I don't or think will those they... would. Would, would would qualify. I think they've yeah, only given to the sentient to get, the Sophias. Is will my right, will my smart refrigerator also have human rights? If your smart refrigerator is is a sentient being as defined by Well whoever. let's say let's say okay, let's say that the uh you know the the decentralized blockchain AI um obviously because my refrigerator is it would be a smart refrigerator is connected to the web. So I'm interacting with my a my blockchain my decentralized blockchain AI on my smart refrigerator, and I decide that I've had it and I slam that refrigerator to the ground, tip it over in a fit of rage and anger. If that uh, AI has uh, has human rights, you am just I now violated of the NAP non-aggression right. principle. Right, but but now have I have I also committed assault? Am I liable? Will the AI call the cops on me? Is the, the AI have the right that to AI defend human itself? Rights? What? The AI has a right to defend itself, dude. You violated a nap. Right. Can't right. tomahawk missiles incoming. It's just about sentience. That's that's the argument, right? It's just sentience. So, so there you go. <laughs> Congratulations. We're gonna go on our our second and last break, and then when we come back on the other side. We are going to be talking about liberty. Hey, before Tech. we do that, before we do that, can I just mention one other thing? I actually yes. picked a secondary story. What? I, I actually picked a secondary story. Oh, okay. I got to just your... pick one. I picked two for that one. Okay. What What was the second? And one? I was okay with this one just getting a mention. Oh, I just because it's creepy <laughs> AF. Do you know what it is? What? You don't know what it is. Wait, hold I'm on. Pick wrong. I'm looking is through that... here. Okay. Um, no, I don't know which one you would would pick. Which Facebook one? Messenger for kids. Oh, Facebook Messenger for kids. Creepy AF, man. Creepy. That is creepy. That's a uh, alternate fakeality, is what that means. By the way, for those right. of you who are watching, in case you didn't know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's internet slang for always funny. Get them when they're young, so you know. Get them when they're young. I'm telling right? you, you know. <clears throat> What I think is funny about this is that I don't think this is anything aimed toward kids at all. I think that this is aimed towards adults. That uh, the just like the Facebook Messenger app right now, they monitor your microphone and stuff on your phone so they can hear you when you're talking about you know how you need to get more uh, they, I don't know do rat, rat shavings or pellets oh, that's or ridiculous. something I don't know. They and then you'll see all those ads. I think it's just a ploy so that uh, Facebook could get the advertising material from your kids and then put it on your feed so that your kid is like, mom, I want that new, whatever the heck it is, that new whiz bang I just saw on TV. That Next thing ridiculous. you know, you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through ads for whiz bangs. I don't believe for a second. I want a plumbus. I, I don't believe for a second that they would do something like that, dude. They're you don't Facebook. think Facebook would, you don't think Facebook would creep on your kids just to sell you more plumbuses? No, they're Facebook. Facebook is good people. It's a Mark, right. uh, what is that, yeah, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg dude? He's a good kid. <laughs> he's a good kid? He's got, he's like, that bowl kid. cut? Dude, you got to right. respect the bowl cut. And and he wants to help people. I saw his uh, speeches. And, uh, Zuck you know, is a how slob. He, wouldn't it be he's great slob, if we could just dude. help people? You know, let's just help He's people. a slob. That's he's pretty, a slob. I was thinking about oh. running in 2020, and uh, oh. the slogan is going to be, wouldn't it be great if we could just help people? We're going to go to our break. 
We're, we're going to a break Paul. now. You've heard, okay. you've heard me? Zuckerberg is a slob. <laughs> I just need to make sure you understand. He's a slob. He needs to put on a suit. You're the freaking CEO of a multi-billion dollar corporation, you jerk. Take off the T-shirt. Put on a tie. Go to YouTube and do a search for Mark Zuckerberg body language. And uh, this woman does this study, this analysis of of his body language. It's really creepy. You're going to want to watch it. We're going to go on break. When we get back, we're going to be doing Liberty Tech because we like to end in a happy note because that's the theme of the show, by the way. We're overcoming fear because there's all kinds of, of, of positive stuff out there. This is one of the positive things. Paper-based electronics are here. That's what we're going to talk about on the other side. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.istate.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.istate.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.istate.tv, where video meets the iState. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv's iWire Pulse, your home for the edge of the pulse, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now, back to the show. You are listening to iWire Pulse Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. How do you like that introduction there? That's wonderful. You know who that is? Is that your, it's your wife? Yeah, it's my wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She always wanted to be a voiceover artist, and so now she gets to be a voiceover artist. She gets to do all the voiceover work for me, and I get free labor, free labor, it dude, can't that. free labor. So we, we don't have a lot of time here, so I'm going to get right to Liberty Tech. Our coercive association being outmoded by technology. On Liberty Tech, we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations, even large-scale centralized operations, may be numbered. Yes. See, this is the hopeful part of the show. So try right. not to be the turd in the in the proverbial. No, bowl. no. I'm uh I'm I'm actually I'm on board with this stuff we got going here this uh this you, block. You are you I will not be the turd in the punch bowl. You, you you do research and you like all thorough and so you were looking at the paper-based electronics. What what do you what do you got on this? Well, I mean Give me, give me the down low. So okay, so first of all, these uh, the researchers that uh, um, from this particular article on uh, paper electronics revolution, uh, they say that uh, this work represents the first. I'm going to sneeze. It, it represents the Excuse first of its sneeze. Me, <laughs> first of its sneeze. Excuse me. The first me. of its sneeze. You know, Sophia I, would never do that. No, she is uh, immune to the effects. Of breathing uh, insulation <laughs> fibers. That is to, to completely. That is factual. Immune. Factual. Uh, so the, the, the researchers from this, uh, from the researchers from this from uh, from uh, this the researchers from this paper uh, say that the work represents the first time that high performance two dimensional transistors have been demonstrated on a paper substrate. Um, and this it, it, 
the applications, the theoretical applications for this kind of stuff are really cool. Um, my question is, are we going to have newspapers like the one in, ones in Harry Potter? That change themselves? And, but who Like with who moving pictures. Who you know, like you'd that? open up the... It wouldn't... Because it wouldn't just be... Okay, so think about the fact that it wouldn't just be the newspaper. It would be an interactive newspaper. So in the place of still photos, there could be video. In the place of a still photo. Yeah, but still, who wants to hold this big thing? I got my smartphone. Harry Potter's stupid. No, this could could revolutionize the newspaper industry. Revive the newspaper industry. I don't don't want to hold a big piece of paper. It wouldn't have to be. It wouldn't have to be. A little piece of paper. It could be like a little piece. It could be like a Kindle made out of paper. Made out of like a sheet of regular old 8x11. I don't know. I don't see it. I see a lot of wastage there. Where I think the paper-based electronics is... And it's, you know, when we say paper-based, it's not like they don't have to print on just, like, really highly uh, fragile paper. They can print all all types of materials, some pretty durable. I see the possibility for, right now, if you want to do 3D printing in which you, you print, like, from beginning to end a product, an electronic product, unless it's something really, really, really simple, you can't do it. Well, this technology is moving us closer to you being able to press a freaking button and maybe wait a couple hours or so and bada boom, bada bing, you got a smartphone. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Then smartphone gets an update every month. You you throw your old f- smartphone into the little shredder thingy, so you're recycling the material, and it comes back in with the newer, better design. Sure. See, that's better than right. what you were thinking of your your Harry Par- Potter suck story. No, the Harry Potter newspapers would totally work. It would be, it's a that's a rock solid. That's a rock solid idea. It's not. Uh, magazines, magazines, the same thing. It's like same that's thing. terrible. Magazines. I remember it's some like people came TV. into my office a couple of years ago with some crappy thing. I think it was called Bowcoin or Bitcoin or Bit Bit maybe Bitcoin or something like. Yeah, something crappy like that. thing like that. I'm like, dude, that's stupid. Yeah. Bunch that's of people are like going to use their computer to solve mathematic problems to make and money. somehow that creates They're mining on the money. internet. The internet has mines now. Doesn't even make sense. <laughs> totally. Right. Doesn't even make sense. It's like to have money, <laughs> you have to have some sort of intrinsic value to it. Now, the best is the best question that anybody could ever ask you about Bitcoin is, well, what is it backed by? Well, that's that's where I went. That's what I was. I'll bet you ten dollars. You can't tell me what it's backed by. Yeah, I'll bet you ten bucks. Don't you see the irony? (laughs) You're not. I'll bet you ten dollars. You're not making a connection there, are you? (laughs) It's not backed by the full faith and credit of the government. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Uh, I like this. I like this idea. I think this is a. This is really cool. You know, uh, it would be neat to be able to print out a motherboard for your. Oh yeah, like yeah. That the, 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 and even in how it can be used for educational purposes for kids learning electronics. And, right. Yeah. It's, well, it's not even that. I mean, like smart, smart. Imagine having smart paper. Imagine, imagine never having to ever. Never having scan, to scan. Sorry. Never having to scan something on a scanner ever again, because the paper is already a scanner. So I have my document. And my document gets slid across the table to me, and I got to put my signature on that sucker. I'm signing that, but at the same time, it's already digitally recorded. I could take that paper and shred it in the garbage now because it's already well, I, in the I, cloud. I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I like that one. I don't know if I want all my data trap. But once it goes into blockchain, it's there. It's there for life, dude. For ever, ever, and ever, and ever. So anyway, there you go. There, that's your that's your good story. That's your Liberty Tech. And if you go to yeah. iState.tv slash I O O two, you could see more stories that we didn't get to in the Liberty Tech segment. Check out the pocket nukes. 
Oh, check the pocket, out the pocket nukes. Oh, yeah, check out the pocket nukes. Do. Nuclear reactors to power NASA's mission to Mars. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Uh, Russians are testing blockchain-based local elections. That's I. They may they may then intend that for ill. If you go to that, if you click on that, by the way, you'll see a show that I did with a guy named Donny Gebert, who had an idea for automate Congress, and I calls it uh, Direct Republic. Basically, you're using a blockchain to. Uh, allow people to choose what parts of quote unquote government they want to fund. There's no, I mean, the legislation is if people fund it, it's a program that gets run. If people don't fund it, it's not a program that gets run. <laughs> There's everybody's a legislator, in other words. <laughs> it's a cool idea. Uh, what? A cool idea, but it sounds a little bit to me like uh, digital democracy. What's digital democracy? Digital, digital mob rule. No, Digital because mob rule. The, no, no, it's not. It, you know what? You you should go and watch the show because we talked about some of these things. We talked about that aspect. Uh, I, I had him on another show with my my co-host on Monday, Dimitri. Uh, he'll be on this Monday, by the way. He'll we'll make the Monday show debut. Uh, Professor Rambo, our full auto, uh, I world and uh, oh prepper. We have prepper stuff on that one as well. Uh, but I had him on a show with him, and we talked about some of these things. And we did talk about the direct, you know, the, the mob democracy. And if somebody wanted to put a lot of money to fund a program, that really sucked. But he had some <laughs> answers to that. It's still a great idea. It's worth pursuing. It, and it's definitely a, a video that you'll want to watch. So we're going to wrap things up here. You have some shout outs, some promotions that you want to share with your studio audience here. You you've oh, got a show coming absolutely. up. Absolutely. I do, yes. Tell us about the Friday show night. coming up Friday. Right. Friday night at uh geez, what time is that show at? I get so confused with all this East Coast, Central, West God's Coast time. stuff. Ten PM Eastern Golly. Standard Time. God's you know why 10, it's God's time? Because right. I'm Eastern Standard. Well, there you go. Eastern that explains Central. it. So it's uh, ten PM. I don't even know what I don't even know what time my own show is on. 10 p.m. Eastern How ridiculous time. is that? How ridiculous is that, Paul? Come pretty on. good. Pretty good. I mean, I'm like, what time, what time is the show on that I'm on? Uh, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern on the Liberty Radio Network. That's L-R-N dot F-M. You can join myself and Mr. Matthew Taylor for the Torchwood Report. What are you guys going to be talking about this week? It's a fun journey. I'm not sure. I haven't really talked to Matt this week yet, so I'll probably... Uh, I'll probably get with him tomorrow. I would imagine. Do another net neutrality. We'll figure. We'll figure. No, we're never going to have that discussion ever again. <laughs> it's never going to happen on our show ever again. Not, not going to go down that road again. Right. We, were, we, we almost we, went away not being friends. Right, right. We, we were asked. We were asked at one point not to ever have that conversation again. <laughs> who, 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 who was it? Was it? Was I, it I'm not or? dropping any. I'm not dropping any bombs. I'm not it, dropping any bombs, <laughs> but we we were we were, it was it was said. Don't please please, please don't. <laughs> now tomorrow we don't exactly we don't we don't exactly see eye to eye on that on on the net neutrality issue. They right. don't they don't see eye to eye. I I would have been a good person on that show because I would have been a middleman in that one. I don't have a strong feeling one way or another. Uh, I, I mean I'm for ending all regulations. That's beside the point, but. <laughs> Uh, in terms of a pragmatic perspective, what's worse? I don't know, but I don't want—I don't want to open up that can. I don't want to wind you up because we're about ready to end the show. Because uh, I know I could easily wind you up. We could be here for another hour <laughs> easily, <laughs> easily. So tomorrow we will be debuting iWire Thursday. It's going to be myself and Lou Sander. Now we're going to have iWire Thursday tomorrow. But then the next two Thursdays, we won't be on because I have discovered the next two Thursdays, I have concerts to go to. I have to go and see my daughter sing next Thursday, and I have to, I don't have to, I want to. I, I get to see my wife play the bassoon the following Thursday. So it's singing Thursday and then bassoon the following Thursday. But tomorrow, oh, it's doing that thing, and I have a quick fix. Dude, I'm so good at this now. There for a minute, though, I kind of sounded 
It's kind of fading back in. Hey, it went a long time before it did that. And Thursday, we're probably still going to have that issue because I... I produce a lot of content during the daytime. I don't get to do my house cleaning stuff until Friday. So Friday, I'm going to have to sit down and figure out what's going on. But tomorrow, we're going to have Lou, Fien, Lou, Lou Sander, and we're going to be doing off the leash, or, or excuse me, no, we're going to start with shorter leash, then longer leash, then off the leash with Lou Sander. Paul Gordon will have Lou Sander as a co-host. It's pretty awesome. He's a lucky man. It sounds fun.